Aras, can you hear us with us some time? Should I start? No, we should wait Good for some time. We should wait for some time because uh, I still have not here. Come, he's not joined. So we will wait for him to join and then we will start. Is it cool? Yes, sir. He will be with us in some minutes because he is facing some uh, technical glitch. But yeah, he will be with us in a second.
uh, yeah welcome paris yeah so uh, neha we can start uh, deepa ma'am yes yeah good morning everyone here we are with our another saturday oh. lecture series a very warm welcome to our coordinator dr deepa hirani ma'am our guest for today paras mahai sir our faculty members my dear friends and people who are watching on youtube i am neha bai and smriti gupta we are your today's host now first and foremost i will request our coordinator of biotechnology deepa hirani ma'am to give the opening remarks a, a very warm uh, morning a good morning to everyone uh, i'm really happy that we have with us paras mahale uh, the speaker for today um he was the first batch of students when i uh, when i was coordinating the department um uh, welcome paris and um, we have started with this initiative of star saturday lecture series the brain child of mayur gaikwad wherein uh, we have these lectures every saturday so that uh, we can expose our present students to the world outside uh so that's basically uh for uh, the our present students to understand what is going on beyond classroom outside the college what are the frontiers that uh, you can explore on after your graduation so it's a journey ahead uh which we will be going uh traveling together every week on saturday so we begin with the saturday lecture series uh the second episode today Thank you, ma'am. So we are back with our Saturday lecture series, preliminary edition. From last Saturday, Department of Biotechnology has took this initiative of starting a Saturday lecture series. As we all know, we invite speakers from different fields to share their experience and to give a talk. Last Saturday, we had an enlightening interactive session with Miss Manasi Dekate from 2019-20 batch. So now it likes uh, like I request sir to introduce our today's guest speaker. What do you say? Yes. So as we all know, Mahale is currently a senior research a fellow at IIC Institute of Malaria Research. So back in 2000, he did his HSC. He got his bachelor in 2010 from Department of Biotechnology College, as Ma'am said. Uh, after that, masters by normally it's not a very common choice normally people <laughs> masters by paper but he was very bold he took research from hopkins hopkins hub institute of mumbai yeah after that national institute of research fellow fellow then as editor at sion private limited and as i told you he is working as senior research at one of the icm that is national Institute of Malaria Research. I guess my voice is. Yes. So, uh, as I told you, that is currently working, and uh, let me tell you, Paras has huge research background as he is in research from almost around twelve years now. Apart from research, he has expertise in many techniques like PCR, ELISA, fluorescent microscopy, cell culturing techniques. So, quite an accomplished career till now. Uh, I know we all are eager to hear Paras, so I will not take much time, and I will give all uh, stuff to Paras. Over to you, Paras. You are mute. Thank you, Mayur. I am audible. Yes, now we can hear you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Mayur. Thank you, Deepa, ma'am. Uh, you were you were the first coordinator during our time, and uh, just la- let me uh, present my slide.
is it my slides are uh, visible visible hello yes uh, it was visible now it is it's visible your computer screen is visible computer screen is visible there is any option to uh, show the slides directly on google meet yes yes there is a there is something there is an arrow down there yeah yeah but yeah. it is showing my computer screen instead of no, uh, slides you have to select you have to select a tab or uh, sorry a window okay so you have to cancel your presentation first stop presenting no okay so now go for present and then a window and then you can open. you will get an option of your presentation slides i should go on present now yeah present now yeah you will get three options no i am just getting one option your entire screen okay okay no problem uh do you want do you want me to present it if you can send me the uh, stuff i can send it otherwise i'll end, uh, do it with the entire screen yeah not a problem yeah not a problem because but i cannot see anyone in that case yeah so you cannot see but you have to be on the presentation <laughs> yeah. yes yes okay yes now we can see your presentation very well yeah but i cannot see others yeah 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 <laughs> that's fine so thank you very much everyone for inviting me for this lecture uh today's talk will be on basically on research diagnosis and career so my uh, whole research is on mostly on diagnosis so i will be going mostly going to speak on diagnosis and research so today's talk will be i'll mostly focus on research quality and attributes diagnosis and career okay is everyone is audible yes yes sir yes so uh, basically i started my career here uh, i'll just introduce myself uh, uh, i started my career after 2010 as an msc by research so mostly i uh, in last 12 years i worked on malaria and recently little bit on covid diagnosis so uh, so mostly i have a background of research and i can speak mo uh, mostly about research only so this is a bsc crowd of biotechnology right Yes, yes. Undergraduate BSc. Undergraduate students, no? F I B S C, T Y B S C, right? First year, second year, third year. Okay. So uh, mostly everyone will be very naive with uh, with the process of research. So to explain, uh, to understand it, it it makes it will make little bit difficult at first. But uh, if anyone is uh, doing research in your in your graduation right now in new education system. Yes, Mayur. Yes, people are doing, people are doing research. Okay. Uh, in I N S Y N F I, this research program for third year. Yeah, they are doing. So uh, first of all, I will like to tell you that uh, we will keep it keep it an interactive session because uh, without interaction, it won't mean anything. I will just present a slide and uh, you will get an idea about it. or you will not get an idea about it so whenever you if you have any question or something uh, mayur you can just uh, ask their questions to me so accordingly uh, it will be helpful uh, interaction so be because i feel communication is a very important in any kind of field wherever you go okay so coming back to research process or research quality it's like uh, everyone want uh, most of the students want to do research after their uh, bsc or msc or go for a phd but uh, to get into a research and to understand research 
it takes around more than four to five years. So basically, it's a degree of PhD only. So at first, you might feel that uh, you are very good in research and all all those things, but truly, uh, doing a, a proper research, it takes time to understand. So if I if if you see the chart, the research process, it is very complicated chart at present. You won't get from this chart anything right now. But I'll explain my research projects to you. So accordingly, we we can come back to this chart, and then you will understand what I am talking about this chart. Okay, so basically, uh, it's like every uh, it's like, for example, if I give you a small example, uh, um, if you if you go on a hill station, and suddenly you find there some mosquito larvae. Okay. and mosquito larvae on a hill station at a high at a high low temperature they are still surviving or few of them were dead so you will come in, uh, in in your mind it will come an idea like how the mosquito larvae are actually available on the high, hill station so basically you will go to that pool you will collect the larvae and uh, make those larvae come to your lab okay and then basically you will try to understand Uh, how to how to find out uh, what what kind of those larvae are mosquito larvae like there are three types of mosquitoes aedes aegypti anopheles and culex so anopheles is mostly responsible for malaria while aedes is responsible for dengue and chikungunya while culex is re- responsible for filariasis so talking about any uh, you for example you got aedes so those larvae were uh, few of few of them were alive and few of them were dead so you just identified those larvae you studied about those mosquito and uh, there was no insecticide spread on those larvae because at high hill station no will go there to spray uh, larvicidal or insecticidal to kill the larvae so that is not possible then we were trying to understand what is the reason how those few of those larvae were dead so we did a study basically then you have to go for a literature study in the literature study you will get to know there are few bacterias who are which are available in the gut of mosquito they are the reason for killing the larvae so basically if you go for it like bacillus thuringiensis is one of the most known bacteria who if it goes into the gut of the back, uh, uh, larvae it can kill the mosquito so for that what happened we try to identify do do those larvae were having uh, bacillus thuringiensis in the gut of the uh, in the gut of the larvae basically so for that we identify a problem now we want a solution for to identify those problem so to find the solution for this problem we understood that we need to do a pcr or any microbiological techniques okay so it's like i will always tell you don't run behind the technique always understand techniques are used to solve your problem so don't say just i just want to learn pcr or i just want to learn flow cytometry or i just want to learn uh, any other uh, uh, real time pcr or any other technique just uh, first of all you need to understand do this techniques will help to under uh, to solve my research problems or not so then i understand if i do a pcr and uh, identify uh, do a amplification through uh, amplification of 16s rna gene of uh, bacillus thuringiensis then in that case uh, if it get amplified and i go i go for a sequencing after that and those sequencing results if i compare through ncbi after that i will get to know it is exactly a bt strain or not and do bt was actually responsible for for it or not so in that way basically i want to convey you a message where first of all you start with a research idea so research idea comes through basic observation okay so for example if you are cooking at home it's like you are normally cooking any kind of uh, uh, meal uh, let's say maggi and all but people started using uh, uh, started putting another stuff in co- cooking like in maggi uh, vegetables and all, all all those things so it's like basically you started doing a research on cooking and in recently in last two years people have done many research on cooking because at home they were have ample of time of uh, doing cooking right so uh, basically i want to say that your research idea comes through observation you have to be alert 
for anything whatever you study through that observation you have to go to that background study of those things like literature review okay literature review is like you will study a background of it then you will formulate a methodology i will not go into the detail you will not understand this chart exactly i will come to my multiplex pcr and then you will understand it okay so then you understand uh, then you uh, design a methodology after designing a methodology you will do some experiments after doing an experiments you will get some data that that will be a data collection after data collection you have ample of data now you have to analyze those data okay data is analyzed then uh, after an analyzing you will get to a point where what are the results and how these results are equivalent to the results the people all around the world has got okay so in that case you will write a discussion where you will compare your results with the other results through uh, through uh, through publications which other people have got similar kind of results or dissimilar kinds of results then you will say i got this result but other have got this result so coming to us uh, co you will come to a conclusion overall finding what is exactly your results are equivalent with the society or not and then you will come to a conclusion and do that through that conclusion you will come to an another research idea so this is a cycle research is a process basically so to understand it i will start with my diagnosis technique where you will get to know more about it okay so uh, mostly i worked on multiplex pcr lateral flow assay this these are the two topics i will cover i i have worked on mosquitoes also and other nano pcr and and palm pcr also but uh, in today's talk i will uh give you a simple examples of multiplex pcr and lateral flow assay do uh, students have a knowledge about pcr and its uh, its principle yes mayur yes paris hello yes yes students have a knowledge about pcr and its uh, otherwise i will speak in detail and they will oh. not understand anything yeah, yeah we have mixture have mixture of first year third year okay okay third year so, they have in Second okay. year also inches on syllabus, but maybe a little bit. Okay, uh, you I'm, can. I'm I, I, well, you can ask students to type if they have any queries, so you can convey the message to me. So in between, you can stop me and tell me because if I start with the flow, they don't have a background and they will like it's, it will be like it becomes difficult to understand. Yes, yes. So so I will request students if they have question, they can just type in the chat or in the YouTube comment. yeah even i will request students you you try to be communicate try to communicate with me because through communication only you will get to learn something okay this is the only thing which is not teach in your education communication skills so uh, uh, coming back to the diagnosis it's like uh, i'll give you a brief background about malaria not brief a small background of, about malaria malaria is a basically a disease of poor country where uh, basic resources are not available in india also malaria is avail, uh, is mostly endemic in rural areas okay not in urban areas not in the cities it is mostly in the villages and tribal areas so to eliminate malaria or to reduce malaria we need to we need to focus mostly on the rural areas so first of all if you go to study any kind of disease or if you want to study any kind of disease you should mostly start with a life cycle of the disease so because i have a background of malaria so i will speak through malaria only so if you want to study anything you sh you should study in detail first life cycle after life cycle you should go for background a uh, problems where malaria is facing the problem so for example uh, in the world pcr is a very sensitive technique no no doubt about it but malaria is mostly available in rural areas and uh, in tribal areas so pcr is very difficult to establish in rural or tribal areas so most of the time it becomes very difficult uh, to use a very good techniques or sophisticated technique in the in the given region where malaria is very endemic so you need to understand when to use which technique that is more important 
so in this case first of all uh, is like mal- in, uh, diagnosis becomes a big challenge in malaria just because the other available techniques are microscopy and lateral flow assay microscopy can give you detection till 50 parasites per microliter is it i am audible yes yes you're perfectly yeah. audible okay okay, okay. so microscopy can give you results around 50 parasites per microliter if if uh, if you take a blood of 1 ml or something so if 50 parasites are available in 1 microliter of blood microscopy can give you the results okay so, so that is the sensitivity of your microscopy technique while the lateral flow assay can give you the results till 100 to 200 parasites per microliter okay and when we go for a pcr pcr will give you a results till uh, uh, 0.1 parasites per microliter so you can understand the understand the basic limits of detection for uh, uh, different techniques but we, we know that pcr is very is very sensitive but how can we use it in uh, tribal areas or rural areas you cannot establish a lab over there it becomes very difficult you cannot solve those problems over there so in that case uh diagnosis become a ma- major challenge in the case of malaria because you need to give a very simple technique in the tribal areas where layman can understand to do it you do you know lateral flow assay what are lateral flow assay mayur people know about it i do like first year rapid diagnostic kits those are lateral uh, flow assay. okay so might have for that but not uh, okay it's a very simple technique i'll get to it uh, it's like uh, in f- within 10 to 15 minutes you get the results it's very simple technique even lame person can do it and those are the best technique can be applied in tribal areas okay so uh, so basically if you in this case i am focusing on diagnosis every disease has four to five aspects like first is diagnosis second is treatment third is vaccine uh, fourth is prevention and uh, one of them is surveillance also the through surveillance you understand uh, what is the exact uh, scenario of a disease in the country or all over the world okay so so these are the five basic aspects you will you will get to know in which aspects you will like to work because diagnosis comes with some technology and some uh, some physicality of it while treatment can be done through uh, through any any of the uh, anti malarial or anti tb anti any anti uh, malarial compounds like usually q9 is the well used malaria compound for a treatment uh, artemisin is one of them uh in the case of vaccines in the case of vaccines like you just have to do different there are different types of vaccines available and you just have to do cloning and all those stuff in the vaccines prevention is the one where in the case of mosquitoes you can prevent mosquitoes growing in a uh, growing in a crowded places where you can do some insecticides or disinfectants and all those things you can do so not allowing mosquito to grow that is called prevention while surveillance is like you want to understand what is a scenario of a disease in the country so surveillance need to be done every 6 months or every year so through that you understand what is the state of the any disease in the country so what i did people for surveillance you can use a very sensitive technique just because you can collect the samples from tribal area and allow it to come to the urban area to your cities where you are doing a research okay so in that case i developed basically we developed a multiplex pcr where it is been used for it can be used for surveillance so normal pcr is like there are uh, there are two types of strains available in india for malaria is like plasmodium vivax and another is plasmodium falciparum i hope you have hear, heard about the, heard about these strains so and other others which are available in other countries are plasmodium ovale plasmodium malaria and plasmodium nullaysi so basically talking about this uh, in india only plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium vivax are endemic so focusing 
डिटेक्टिंग ईच टेक्निक एट अ टाइम थ्रू पी सी आर विल टेक अ टाइम बेसिकली इट्स लाइक इफ यू पुट अ पी सी आर फॉर फैलसी पेरम इट विल टेक थ्री आर्स इफ यू पुट अ पी सी आर फॉर वाई वैक्स इट विल टेक थ्री आर्स एंड इफ यू पुट अ पी सी आर फॉर प्लाजमोनियम जीनस इट विल टेक थ्री आर्स तो रनिंग विल टेक ओनली टेन आर्स वाइल इन द केस ऑफ मल्टीप्लेक्स पी सी आर यू कैन डू ऑल दो थिंग्स इन टू टू थ्री आर्स ऑल द जीन्स कैन बी एम्पलीफाइड साइमल्टेनियसली so i hope you know something about multiplex uh, you know normal something about pcr so you can understand about multiplex pcr so basically as i was mentioning first of all you need to understand a background of a study now i identified that i want to work on diagnosis and not on treatment or vaccines or prevention so i want to work on diagnosis so i will first of all make a make a understanding that which techniques lies where what microscopy or rdt or elisa or any molecular methods like real time pcr multiplex pcr or lamp lamp is a loop amplification mediated pcr so it's a very very convenient technique it's a very sensitive technique nowadays people are going for a lamp assays so it's a molecular method again so for each of this technique you and you need to understand the what is the infrastructure required what is the cost per, per test what is the level of expertise is required required but mostly i i al always focus on sensitivity and specificity and the cost aspect so i always focus on cost time for test sensitivity and specificity mostly i focused on these four points to understand a technique so there are several advantages and disadvantages uh, in this chart so you can understand the basic problem of diagnosis in malaria so these charts will tell, tell you everything about basis a uh, basic problem of diagnosis so i uh, mostly i focus on like uh, cost per test in in the case of microscopy the cost is low while in the case of uh, pcr the cost is high or medium okay or mm. uh, and in the case of sensitivity the cost is uh, sorry sensitivity is moderate but, but in the case of multiplex pcr sensitivity is very high plus i was talking about detection limit per microliter this is parasites per microliter in your blood if someone gets infected with plasmodium or malaria so what are the quantity of parasites exist in the blood so basically microscopy is able to detect 5200 parasites per microliter while lateral flow assay this is rdt is means lateral flow assay is also able to detect 50 to 100 or 100 to 200 parasites per microliter it is less sensitive than microscopy while elisa can go to 10 to 50 parasites per microliter while pcr can go to 1 parasites per microliter so that is the quality of your pcr technique it becomes more sensitive but although although it cannot be used in urban area so you have to solve the problems accordingly so uh if anyone knows about primer designing here or primers hello mayur yes so i, I will give our students to because uh, i'm sure sy third year mm -hmm. to answer what is it so do we have any third drishtans or riya anybody i want to see what others are <laughs> yeah it's okay Shall I go But, in the uh, chat box? No, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. So the thing know about primers, uh, they know about uh, PCR. Is okay. The two of the divisions know about detail. Students have any questions till now? No. The only which came was about flow assay. Lateral flow. Want to know how? Okay. I'll come. Works. I'll come to lateral flow assay after yeah. this. Yes. I am uh, right now. I will focus on PCR, then to lateral flow assay. Yes. 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 So basically, uh, this is a diagrammatic presentation of a gene of 18s RNA sequence of Plasmodium genus, where uh, it's like I have made few colors, basically identifying that this is a region for falciparum. This is a region for pink color region is for Vivax, and this is a region. This is a common region for Plasmodium. So first of all, you need to understand uh, through NCBI or primer designing uh, applications that 
what is your target and what you want to do so in normal scenario it will like you will make forward primer and you will make a reverse primer this this complete uh, size is 675 base pair okay while uh, in the case of multiplex pcr what what we did was like we made a common reverse primer and three different forward primers where one detects falciparum one detects vivax and one de detects plasmodium genus plasmodium genus was uh, plasmodium genus means there is a possibility of any kind of species like falciparum vivax ovale malaria or nolasi so any of the diseases can be present in the case of if only a plasmodium genus gives you a band okay so uh, this is a virtual representation of how your gene look like and where you have to identify the target region and design a primer accordingly okay so i'll go to another this, this will help you i'll come to this so when we did a multiplex pcr this is a ladder if anyone knows about a ladder this ladder represent the size of a dna this is a standard basically this is 100 200 300 400 500 600 and this is 700 so this ladder represent that you are getting a right amplification or not so you are getting a right positive bands or not so this is a conventional pcr basically where uh, you go for an agarose gel electrophoresis and in the case of real time pcr you get the results directly through fluorescence uh, through your uh, through your vis visible computer so we'll talk about this first it's like plasmodium falciparum if i get a band here so it's like it's close to 700 so it was 675 base pair band and this suggests that plasmodium falciparum was positive in this sample while this was a plasmodium vivax band which suggests a 462 base pair 400 and 500 in between 400 and 500 while this band suggests for pan pan is used for plasmodium genus so you should first understand what is a genus and what is species so like plasmodium falciparum is a species plasmodium vivax is a species Plasmodium ovale is a species, but Plasmodium is a genus where all these three or five types of species exist. Okay, and talking about multiplex PCR is like in normal PCR, you just put one pair of primers and you amplify it and you get a result. But in multiplex PCR, you put three pair. In this case, like I have targeted three genes, so three pairs of primers and you amplify together and you get results like this. So you know which band exists for what. If these bands get, I will say it's a plasmodium genus positive. If I get this band, I will say it's a plasmodium vivax positive. So accordingly, you can in one reaction only you are getting both the bands or you are getting all the three bands. If uh, if it is a mixed infection, in the case of mixed infection, you will get all the three bands. In the case of single infection, you will not get all the three bands. You can see a slight band here which suggests a plasmodium band because if if falciparum is present definitely you will get a plasmodium band also because it is a genus and this is our species so sometimes what happens if if by chance there is no falciparum and there is no vivax and you just get this band that means that means it is a it is malaria positive but it is not falciparum or vivax and truly speaking about it is like in india you just get mostly 99 percent of samples positive with falciparum or vivax you don't get other other uh, other species positivity so in that case if you if you don't get this band and you get this band it means there is a chance of another species like plasmodium ovale plasmodium malaria and plasmodium nolasi so there is a chance of another disease uh, another disease uh, positive in the case of uh, malaria in india which is very rare and if you even get a one sample positive it is a publishable data people have to publish and speak to the world that india is getting this sample also positive we should try to do something immediately on it and avoid its transmission because falciparum and vivax is already endemic but if if you get any other disease of any other species of malaria then you have to work immediately on it okay so this was about uh, multiplex PCR, which was done in one reaction go. 
So anyone have any doubt uh, regarding multiplex PCR? I'll come back to you. So, RS, uh, we do any combination of in, uh, in this multiple PCR or it has same genus like that. Sorry, sorry, can I not able to hear you properly? Yeah. I I'm asking, can we do any combination of gene amplification in this multiple multiplex yes, PCR? Definitely. Or it has to be like, you know, genus species, same genus, same species, something like that. You can do any combination. People can detect malaria, dengue and chikungunya in one PCR only. So, so, so that is fantastic. That is fantastic. You just, you are basically targeting only a gene. So you we can need just need a, proper primers in this, correct? You just need a proper primer, proper optimization and proper standardization. It's like, I forget to tell you about like PCR is a technique where you need a very, uh, very stringent optimization. It, it requires a time for optimization. It takes around at least a month to optimize your primer. You have designed a primer, but you don't know it will work or not because through through NCBI website, through primer designing module, you got to know that this primer will work. Okay. But this is not the scenario in lab condition. In lab condition, it may work or it may not work. Anything can happen. So PCR optimization is a very stringent uh, uh, protocol where if you optimize once, then it can be used for a long time. No problem. And you can even people <laughs> nowadays, is like who go for a diagnosis, they patent their primers. So no other can use those primers. So they are, um, so they can use it for testing pro uh, process and all, all those things. Is it so? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so basically in COVID, mostly people did that and in other, because you can use those primers for yourself only for testing, no? So, yes. so that's bad, I guess. Patent is amazing. Um, Patent is good for that one person and <laughs> bad for another, but although, uh, yeah, it, it is, it is, this is how it is. So basically it's one's ideology and uh, patenting is, is a, is a process where it respects person's ideology to earn something from it. So <laughs> that is how it is. While in the case of COVID, it was not that, uh, it, it was not uh, patenting most, uh, mostly about uh, diagnosis. Diagnosis was open in COVID everywhere. Patenting was mostly done on uh, vaccines and all those things. So coming back to multiplex PCR, uh, the, you can, uh, as Mayur asked, you can diagnose TB. It's very difficult. It's like if you if you insert many primers into the one reaction mixture, it makes it it makes it very difficult because uh, there is a chances of non-specific binding uh, in the case of PCR. So if you have heard about non-specific binding, it's like it will bind to a primer, primer can bind to each other or primer can bind to any human uh, regions. Two primers can bind to each other uh, like this, not completely halfway. And these regions can bind to any human, uh, human uh, ge uh, genomic region, wherever. So it, there is a more, if, if you increase more primers, there is a, more uh, there is a decrease in specificity so you have to be aware of that so this this this, this becomes very uh, it it makes very difficult to standardize multiplex pcr more in the case of normal pcr okay so i'll go to so i'll i'll come to lateral flow assay uh, this is a very complicated diagram, I think so. So, okay. Uh, I'll go to lateral flow assay. Uh, lateral flow assays are very simple technique uh, and very reliable. Uh, it's like uh, you can just carry it anywhere. You just have to put a blood drop. Uh, for example, uh, you just have to put a blood drop here somewhere. And uh, it's like you just have to put a buffer. Uh, you, with a kit, a buffer will be available and a, a small type, a series type thing is available where you can prick a blood from the finger, put it here through it and put a buffer and everything will run. It, it don't have any, uh, 
any stringent things in it it's just it's it's uh, making a kit is a very difficult but for people to do it's very easy even lay person can do lateral flow essay okay so basically this these are rapid, rapid diagnostic test or immunochromatography technique this, this come under immunochromatography technique just a second So these are very basic tests. I'll explain you the principle first about this test. Uh, is, uh, I was talking about like lateral flow assay can be used by lay person also, but PCR cannot be done by lay person. You need a very skilled technician. Even microscopy cannot be done by a layman person. It, it needs skilled technician. A skilled technician can only identify and say that it is a malaria positive or any other disease positive. But in this case, you just a lay person just run a sample. If he gets a line, if he gets a line, then it is positive. If you don't get a line, then it is negative. It is very simple for them to understand, but it is very complicated to make. So it's like uh, lateral flow essay has uh, four different pads. It's like this is a sample pad. This becomes a conjugate pad. This is a cellulose membrane, which is treated with nitro. So basically nitrogen, basically it is called as nitrocellular membrane and this is a wicking pad or adsorbent pad where because of this pad, whatever buffer is put here, it is run in a unidirection flow. So buffer has to go in this direction only because of this pad, because this pad absorbed uh, all the water or what, whatever the liquid component through, uh, through in this direction. Uh, and first of all, uh, I'll explain the, uh, this is basically, I'll, I'll come to this diagram again before explaining, I'll explain this way first. So, for example, it's like you coat a antibody on the test line, okay? Basically, this is a nitrocellulose membrane. You coat an antibody on it and you, uh, this is basically your, uh, we will call it as a primary, primary antibody. If your sample consists an antigen, antigen, this antigen will be of plasmodium falciparum or plasmodium vivax. In the case of malaria, in the case of malaria, HRP2, histidine rich protein 2 antigen is available for detecting plasmodium falciparum and LDH, lactose dehydrogenase antigen is available to detect plasmodium vivax. So if a blood sample contains this antigen, it will come and bind to this primary antibody. Okay. And your conjugate pad, this is your conjugate pad. Okay. This is your conjugate pad. This conjugate pad will have a combination of another secondary antibody with a fluorescence label. So fluorescence label, is, I mean, it's like, uh, for visible eye people you uh, visible detection people use gold nanoparticles here so it gives you a red color while fluorescence detections can be done by fitc or alexa or any other fluorescence molecule for that you need a specific of uh, excitation and emission wavelength uh, component to detect it because it is not visible to a naked eye while gold nanoparticles are visible for a na naked eye so I'll come back to this labeling. If you, if I forget, you can uh, remind me about this labeling. Now the whole research is all about labeling only. This is a common chemistry everywhere you can find, but people are just doing a research on labeling. How lab, uh, even if if small number of antigen comes and bind, then how this labeling can be increased to easily visible for a naked eye. So in a, a simple way, it's like. You have a primary antibody. If the sample contains antigen, it will bind. If a sample don't contain antigen, it will not bind. And because of which your secondary antibody will not bind. Your secondary antibody binds to the another portion of the antigen. Okay. And this becomes a complex. And whenever this becomes a complex, this dye, which is available, basically a gold nanoparticle, it will give a color. So obviously these molecules are in millions, not in single, but just to explain. Uh, this is how it works. So it's like here it has been shown. This is a fluorescence molecule. This is your secondary antibody. 
this is your primary antibody this is a control line antibody control line suggests that your test was run properly uh, the antibodies has not expired or they have not de degenerated basically so that for that you have to consider a control line so and this will contain your sample for example this is a positive sample okay so uh, sample and buffer has been put here and this will run now so after running this antigen will get bind to the secondary antibody first which is at a conjugate pad this whole combination this whole combination will move together when it moves together it will the another part of the antigen will bind to a primary antibody and this becomes a sandwich uh, sandwich uh, sandwich for antigen basically in between the two antibodies so primary antibody antigen secondary antibody and this is your fl fluorescence fluorescence in the sense in this case it is a gold nanoparticle gold nanoparticle is not called fluorescence it is called chromogenic it is called chromogenic effect chromogenic effects are those effects which is directly visible to a naked eye while fluorescence are not directly visible to the naked eye but i'll tell you that the chemiluminescence is more sensitive than fluorescence and fluorescence is more sensitive than chromogenic like gold nanoparticle but to use chemiluminescence and fluorescence for chemiluminescence you need radiogram for detection so you cannot take radiogram in a tribal area because using a radiogram is very difficult it's like it is carcinogenic also people don't know they will just open it and it will create havoc instead of that fluorescence is more uh, easily uh, fluorescence is more easily available and it is easily detectable you just need to take a small component a uh, so small machine where you can put this small rapid diagnostic kit on over it and through uh th uh through a protection eye covering you can see whether uh the band was positive or not but even this is not available right now in a in any region fluorescence kits are not uh, widely used they are just people are just starting the research on it mostly the widely used are very simple to use gold nanoparticles which has been attached to the secondary antibody which is directly visible to the naked eye okay so and this is a control line control line is like just uh, antibody will directly bind to antibody so basically if is if this antibody is raised in mice then this antibody would have been raised in goat but it will be goat anti mouse antibody then only these two antibodies can bind to each other and uh, obviously a secondary antibody has a dye on it so it will give a control line so control line is very difficult uh, very simple uh, it just tell you that the running was the running was proper your adsorbent pad was working your all the membranes were working properly so you are if a control line comes then your test run properly but if control lines doesn't come it means that your test wasn't run properly you have to repeat this test with another kit this kit has some problem in it so because of which a control line exists so this was the basic uh, principle of uh, a go a lateral flow assay and this is just a antigen antibody complex that's suggesting the lateral flow assay so i'll come to mayur again is uh, if people if uh, yes so if, if anyone has a doubt uh, uh the... yeah so there is a question uh from nikita madam uh she was asking that uh so is multiplex pcr available in diagnostic laboratories so she was asking question about the multiplex PCR. yes yes even i think high media is doing multiplex pcr for malaria in covid also there are three genes amplified together so definitely uh, people are doing multiplex mostly all privatization are doing uh, multiplex pcr and using them uh, in government uh, in research laboratories people are doing very good on multiplex pcr and it's a new uh, from last 5 years people are last 5 to 6 years it was like it is like multiplex pcr is in very command where people thinks you, you you just have to put one sample and you will get multiple results for disease positivity or negativity 
so yes yes it is available in diagnostic laboratories even covid detecting 3g is orf and all those three three two to three genes at a time yeah so and there is one more question from our staff <laughs> uh, for example when we talk about sensitivity and reliability of any mm. assay mm. and then we put in the context of this tribal when we go to a tribal place so what is what is the priority there is it sensitivity or it is reliability uh, in tribal area it is mostly a reliability so because of which india is using only two techniques in tri tribal area microscopy and this lateral flow assay rapid diagnostic kits because pcr is next to impossible but they can uh, what they do they collect the samples from there and uh, for research purpose you can do uh, you can come to cities areas and study that is not an issue but in tribal areas if someone is very uh, is, is not well he has a fever and all so you cannot wait for pcr and you you need to do it uh, you you will give a sample to cities areas it will take a time but you it will take almost 2 to 3 days to give a positivity day, uh, report or not so that will take a lot of time for patient to do a treatment lateral flow assays give you results in 10 to 20 minutes mostly maximum 30 minutes and if the person is positive it's like immediately he will given a an artemisinin or any quinine drug for anti malarial treatment so this is how the impact of time comes into the matter so and it is also cheaper than pcr so reliability is the is the, is the first preference yes yes so we will not we will not uh, wait and ask questions because there will be lot of questions if we wait yes. i yes. i like like uh, i am almost done i will go to research and career yes uh, actually i i just talk about later it's like what india is doing for malaria so icmr is a uh, indian council for medical research is established an organization called mera india it's like malaria elimination research alliance so mera india is a is a is a funding agency uh, together working for malaria elimination in india and they are uh, basically funding projects and all where if someone gives them a very good proposal for re regarding malaria and all those things they have different themes for it epidemiology theme prevention theme through mosquitoes larvicidal themes and it's like uh, diagnosis treatment vaccines are definitely available so they they have planned icmr has planned to eliminate malaria by 2030 in india so hopefully every year the cases from last 4 years uh, every year the cases are reduced to half uh, to half in mal for malaria in india so malaria is decreasing very good at, at good rate in india hopefully your drug doesn't be, uh, your anti malaria doesn't become resistance so even those checking is all uh, on surveillance checking are always always going on that your drug is always capable of doing it things that it doesn't become resistance so nowadays people have started giving uh, therapy in combination so only they don't give one drug at a time they give three drugs at in combination to a patient so even if one becomes resistant the other two are available for to 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 kill the malaria parasite so i'll just want to i want to inform you about that uh, india is doing good in, in the case of malaria as cases are in last 5 years i think uh, cases are reduces to half every year so Uh, this was the molecular dynamics study i did this is a bioinformatic approach of my protein so i'll not go to this i'll just want to show you so coming back to a uh, research it's like uh, i will always say that uh, a good research can be done easily uh, it's like uh, finding an answer is not a problem for any research researcher so 
finding an answer is never a problem you can find you can just go for it and just find the answer but research is all about finding a right question so this this may be not taught to everyone is like research is all about asking the right question if you ask the right question it has a right value then you can design a project for it accordingly and get into it so research is all about that he do, do i ask the right question and to ask the right question you need to have a good observation skills you need to have a good literature reading and through that through background you can understand so as we were saying that uh PCR is very sensitive technique, but it's not useful in tribal areas for malaria diagnosis. So you need to you need to ask the right question. So how can how can uh, we instead of improving using PCR, how can we improve the lateral flow assay? Because it has a hundred to two hundred parasites per microliter sensitivity. So you should instead of in the case of malaria instead of working on they say how can they increase the sensitivity through fluorescence different fluorescence molecule or through combinations of different fluorescence molecule so it can come to 50 to 25 parasites per microliter if that sensitivity is increased if we can detect low amount of parasite present in the blood that will that that will be more helpful because low parasite uh, low low number of parasites are basically asymptomatic to patient and the patient don't know that he is positive because of that he will transmit the disease to another through through basically it will get transmitted through mosquito only there is no any other option but he don't know he is positive so he will definitely not take any anti malarial uh, treatment or something so in this case Eliminating any disease, uh, any disease is a big challenge basically. So the techniques which are used where uh, malaria is endemic, we have to improve those techniques. So mostly people are working on diagnosis uh, for malaria elimination. People are working on lateral flow assays instead of PCR. PCR is a very good technique for TB, tuberculosis. So it's like it's a gold standard for TB. Uh, in the case of TV, you, you, this is the first most of the nowadays like culture culture will give you results after two three months, but uh, but PCR gives you results in one or two days in the case of TV. So TV is a very uh, PCR is a very good technique for TV, but it is not that it is a good technique for doing a research or uh, understanding a surveillance problems. Like as I de uh, developed a multiplex PCR that will help me to understand uh, what is a scenario of malaria in india where malaria exists from where where uh, areas of india i will collect the samples like odisha or madhya pradesh or any other state near that jharkhand those areas have high malaria endemic but this, those are basically high malaria endemic regions so from which regions uh, from from which regions of those area tribal area i will collect the sample and understand what is the scenario of malaria so for that surveillance program you can use pcr so i want to i want to tell you that you have to understand the problem first so if you understand the problem first then you can design an experiment accordingly okay so for for example if i go to the first slide in this case so research idea become a very important research idea come to us through a background study so it's like it no it never goes like this first you need to do a background study you need to understand a disease condition and then you can go for a research idea uh, you can you can generate your research idea anyone can re re generate research idea it's not difficult it's like just you have to get into this you just have to read 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 you don't have to remember you just have to read 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 and then you will come to a uh, come to any research idea automatically if but that research idea is a very right question if you have asked a very right question then you can design a problem accordingly you can design a material or methodology accordingly but designing a mater material methodology is also very important you have to understand ki that those things have a uh, your institute or your department have those facility to provide or to make such work happen 
okay so it's like you design an experiment for flow cytometry and you you, you don't have an uh, you don't have a machine then what is the use of it you have to go where you have to collaborate with those institutes which have flow cytometry okay but i will again tell you don't run behind techniques always learn behind learning a problem and finding a right question techniques can be used from anywhere uh, through any collaborations never hesitate to do collaboration research cannot be done by one person it has to be always done in a combination where however wherever you are wherever in future if you want to do research it is always done in a combination uh, it's like it, it cannot be done by one person basically so after methodology you do a experiment then you collect you do experiment i did a multiplex pcr i i collected the sample through sample collection i i did a pcr for 200 samples i got something around 70 to 80 positive through multiplex pcr then i compared two techniques microscopy and nano pcr uh, and nested pcr basically and then i analyzed those comparison which technique was more better and which do my multiplex pcr was stand out with the normal pcr it was giving me the same kind of result or not so i did a statistical analysis my answers i got some answers and then i wanted to compare what were the limitations in those uh, statistical analysis for for example multiplex pcr was lacking in some aspect and it was very advantageous in some aspects so those kind of differences what i got with the standard technique those things were available uh, in the previous studies what people have did so we have to discuss those things in your discussion through studying other papers so in that case like people have done work on multiplex pcr they got these results they also got these differences with for differences for two standard technique so in that case you have to compare accordingly and you have to say that your result is equivalent with the what people have got or what you have done exactly where it stand out so th that everything comes under discussion and through this discussion you come to a conclusion saying that uh, it is a very basically it is a very approachable technique and it can be used for surveillance it reduces the cost normal pcr takes more time it reduce uh, it increases the cost while multiplex pcr takes less time and it reduces the cost and it can be easily uh, done so this is how your research idea comes uh, uh, research idea comes to a conclusion where you will have more identification for example you can come you can just not do multiplex pcr for plasmodium you can go for dengue you can go for chikungunya you can go for any uh, viral infections also and you can simultaneously a person has to give sample only once and you can simultaneously detect four to five diseases at a time in which if person is infected with one of them or any two of them this is so this was all about research and its ideology this is the same thing what i am talking about oh i'll come to us i'm not good in that much in suggesting you a career your madam and will can tell you more better than me uh, but uh, basically you would uh, have options for government jobs or private firms or startups but it's like uh, you will have here here uh, means like uh, normal people do this good people do this and legends will do this so in that way i always classify it that normal people do government jobs good people go for a private firms but legends go for a startups <laughs> just because startups are very important i'll go to the other slide i'll explain you uh, it's like uh, see you can government sector you can cl uh, clear any state government exams psc or upsc or whatever central government there are uh, in the case of government sector if you have completed i'll i'll suggest you uh, you you minimum qualification is masters even if you don't go for a phd you should complete your msc i i'll always suggest you is a basic qualification in in today's era so after bsc go for msc definitely if you don't go for psc that is completely fine so msc people can have obviously there are many positions available in uh, government sectors also you just have to be in touch with 
uh, through web websites and all. Keep what are the positions available and where you can go for it. But that is the future for first year or second year. TY even that is the future for TYBS students also. After MSc, I can suggest you to go go into the career point of view more. But there is a career, so it's like career is not dependent on uh, not dependent on the jobs available in the country or not. Career is always dependent on the individual individual capabilities. I always feel that if you have a if you have a right capabilities, you can succeed in any field. Any field. It's like just this is uh, like biotechnology is like just a degree you get for MSc, but after MSc you do any kind of job where you are not just restricted to biology or botany, zoology or biotechnology or microbiology. You may have to do some work regarding mathematics or physics or chemistry or something, or even any other field, computer science and all those things. So if this is just this is just for a degree. Your main main income source will be through your degree only but you have to you have to go for you have to learn small small other things also in at least little bit that will help you more so you don't have to restrict yourself to only biotechnology nowadays like uh, uh, learning uh, uh, computer science becomes very important learning small things in computers is very essential like in even in biology it's like bioinformatics is a different approach where where first of all nowadays first people start doing their research through in silico methodology where they do it on computer first and then they go for a laboratory experiments so uh, definitely there are many options i in P, after phd there are definitely many options as assistant professor scientist eligibly for research oriented fellowships there are many fellowships available in india through net examination, uh, if you know that, uh, and Mayur can explain you very well in this in this case. So this is what normal people do. I always feel so. And then in the case of private sectors, there are many industries and MNCs available, diagnostic companies available, uh, data analysis post, regulatory post. There are many things available for uh, for many people. So it's like. BSc skill, MSc PhD, whatever you have done, you have, uh, you have to grow accordingly. If you have done PhD, you can become a team manager or team leader in future. And PhD is very useful. If you have a degree, sometimes degree helps you a lot. But MSc is also uh, is 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 the basic degree in in today's area. I feel so. But I'll come to this point. For I will come to a point where what legends do basically i think uh, searching for a job instead of that everyone should uh, focused on what society needs basically it's like we are the people who can create a job instead of running behind those uh, 100 jobs it's like sometimes in government it's like one post comes and 1 lakh people are applying for it or something more than 10,000, 20,000 people apply for one post. So that becomes very difficult, even difficult for the government employees to select the candidate. They have, they have 20, 30,000 candidate. You have to select, you have to uh, verify their forms and everything. And you have to select one person from that after entrance and after ex interviews and all those things. So it is a very difficult task and there is Obviously, there is not possibility as population increases. There is always a, a more competition for getting a job in government sectors or uh, even in private sectors also. But instead of running behind those jobs, because you are a talented people, you can do things. If you think a little bit, you can. We can create something small things, and those small things or small products. Can be you use it, you know can be create jobs or they can be sold out and those things basically if you it's like if you make some products making a product is not difficult but people don't have a uh, people have a fear for it making a product in India it's like you can make any biology related product even if you make a master mix master mix is like what you, what you use it for PCR, which contains DNTPs, tag polymerase, MG, MGCL2 concentration, uh, ions concentrations and all those things. 
making a product is not difficult you, you can you can make lateral flow ss this is a big product i'm talking about you can make vacuum tanners you can make anything but usually what india relies on india mostly relies on importing not exporting india india buy from another countries mostly even small small products india buy it from another country so how your economy will rise you have, for basic things at least we can create small products small products uh, which are needed for society we can create those products and we can sell those products in in the country also and in outside the country also so that actually directly will help the con- economy of the country so i always believe that uh, startups like you are the people we are the people we who we have ideology just we need to uh, get out of those fear and do something better where we can develop small small products not i don't want you to develop a big diagnostic company or i don't want to make you um, develop a big industry we don't have to do that you just have to make small small products we have to just create if 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 you require 10 people for to make this, those products you can give jobs to those 10 people is and you can just sell those products and you can basically i'm talking about uh, business development so th- this is the this is a need where this is a need of the country basically where i feel people go for developing their own businesses for small small things don't go for bigger things all we have given a bigger challenge bigger fear and all those things but we can do this thing small small things and instead of waiting for a job in government or a private sectors you can create your own jobs and you can just uh, even you can create your own own jobs and you can also handle you can help in boosting the economy of the country and then we cannot blame gdp and all those things <laughs> for, to the government or private sectors so i uh, thank you very much yes so thank you very much aras it was amazing session it was truly a master class like we discussed about research we discussed about research methodology we discussed about how the very complicated techniques we need to still grasp our mind into that and of course you gave a very interesting analogy for our career uh, opportunities and i'm very sure all the students here as well as on youtube will be extremely benefited with this class so i will take some few questions because we are running out of the time so yes. we will take some few questions and uh, yes so one is from mansi uh, which is about the career so she is saying that how much do institutes from which you are learning matters in research field for example icmr hmm. how do that matters in in research field uh, it's like if you want to go for a phd uh, uh, i have always classified phd is un- under different types of institutes it's like at the first i will always tell people to go for iit tifr jnu those are very good uh, good institutions for doing a phd because it has a student environment while uh, csir and dbt institutes also has a student and staff uh, environment where you can study well you can understand the research they have very good guidance also while icmr is the one uh, which has very control over the samples every type of disease in india they have a control over the samples so it's like many people at the end of the day whatever kind of research you have did you have to deal with the sample it should have some application so they have to collaborate even who collaborate with icmr only is is like uh, one of my sir has went to uh, outside india so he was saying that uh, i am working in indian council for medical research in who so they did not understand what is the indian council <laughs> but after that he said i am working for icmr then they immediately understand okay you are working for an icmr okay. so in india icmr has a hold uh, for samples so samples are the key for doing uh, for doing uh, res- applicable research 
so if you don't have a sample you won't do applicable research but i will always suggest to go for iits even iit has biological research no problem in going that tifr nibsc nbsc they are the first preference and later on you can go for icmr institutes for phd those you can consider to be a second well i'll i'll suggest if you have an opportunity to go outside india at good institutions in us or anywhere so the the grooming over there for phd is very different so uh, it's ob- obviously a master class over there so you can learn from there and apply in india that is a that will be very good as options yeah so there is pratiksha who is asking a very interesting question that are malaria diagnostic kits available at the chemist just like ov shelf kits and i will extend this question if not can we develop those kinds of uh, you know kits no kits are not available in chemist it's not it cannot be given because uh, what happens actually uh, anyone can make a fa- false kit and they can sell it so which has no meaning for it so i have we have a who rdt lot testing lab it means that a, a private company makes kit and it comes to us we do a testing of this kit because they they produce kits in many numbers so they give few numbers to us for testing after that successful testing we give them a certificate basically icmr gives them a certificate after through that certificate they can sell the kits in the market so we are the one so it is called who rdt lot testing lab so we are the uh, icmr is the one basically who in the case of rapid diagnostic kits they do testing and then it is available in the market so you are just confirming that the things are been well made it is under the who protocol it is able to detect 200 parasites per microliter so it can be sent to market so every time a private company produce a new lot for a specific rdd kits they have to either they have to give it to us or they have to give uh, same similar types of institute who can approve and with their certification they can sell it into the market yeah, for hospitals and all so there is one question from namrata madam who the the question is from students and namrata madam because she is asking what are the job opportunities through icmr and how to approach this icmr will give you government jobs on the it's like you 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 will have a scientist b scientist c scientist d positions you will have technical officer positions technical assistant position you have lab technician positions so they have nowadays uh, there are less government jobs and more uh, temporary jobs in icmrs and even governments also so yeah, it's not difficult to get a temporary job in government nowadays it's not it's not difficult you just have to approve you have just have to work hard and get into it but uh, to get a good government job permanent job it's very difficult it's very difficult <laughs> so you you that, that is a different scenario so so normal uh, jobs which are uh, available in icmr are, are like this only scientists and all those things they won't okay. be a privatization yes so i guess there will be more questions coming so uh, what i will do is whatever the question comes i will project it to you through mail or through Uh, yes yes no problem so that uh, uh, you can have an interaction with them and maybe in future we can have some kind of workshop on pcr you know uh, yes yes so we we be very nice collaborative uh, uh, we used to do that before yes, i will like deepa uh, madam to do some closing remarks if she can um, that was a really really enlightening session for all of us um Uh, Paris, probably you know, if you can, uh, you know, just uh, give some startup ideas to the students, like you know, uh, okay. as you said, you know, jobs. Uh, normal people do jobs. Good people. <laughs> Good people. Go for private jobs. <laughs> legends go for. And uh, <laughs> the the legends uh, carry out startups. Startups, so, yes, yes. And as uh, you just mentioned, you know, job availability is very low. So yes, you know, uh, we would like to invite you know. Um, inculcate this idea of startups in our students so that you know after their post graduation or while they are doing yes. their post graduation they can start thinking on those lines you know yes it's definitely or you start thinking 
uh, you start working in that direction yes yes i am so, thinking of that right now <laughs> i am just waiting right, for my phd to get complete ma'am and then i'll mostly go for it great great so we'll have you for one more session on just on you know how do you go about with startups yes yes definitely definitely i'll i'll take some time for it <laughs> but i'll do no problem yes Yes, okay yes. so now thank we you, are at the end of the session i will call ved to give a vote of thanks and uh, close the session yeah ved yes sir good morning thank you for inviting me for giving the vote of thanks it's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion for our honorable guest respected principal valuable members of the staff and my fellow students and friends I am here for the first year students of BSc Biotechnology. The entire organizing committee and my own behalf extend a very hearty vote of thanks to Paris Mahale sir. So your presence has been an absolute honor. Your words of wisdom has made our this Saturday lecture series enlightening as well as a brainstorming one. Thank you for sharing us with us your knowledge and expertise. I would also like to extend my thanks to our honorable principal, Professor Vasant Reddy. thank you for supporting us and for providing us the day for holding our saturday lecture series last but extending our thanks to our today's coordinator deepa hirani ma'am ma'am it was your it was under your guidance that our today's saturday lecture series was conducted with such precision and thank you for being present here and sharing this informative session with us last but not the least A special thanks also to my fellow students and friends for being here and for participating wholeheartedly in the session. Thank you for making this lecture both interactive and such fun. Hope to see you all again for the next Saturday lecture series on the fifth of March. Thank you.